You do something, you take ozone shots? Some of this next sounds a little... <laughs> it is, it is, it is. It's, uh, that's in the, uh, one of the underground therapies. What do you do when you've got nowhere else to go? Saved my life, you could say. Ozone is the most important drug in the world. I was dying then. You know, I need it now. This is lunatic uh, medicine. My patients very much need ozone. International medical studies suggest a major breakthrough. Yet American government officials and the media have condemned it as medical fraud. How has opinion become so divided over such a simple medical treatment? Ozone is well known as the protective layer surrounding the Earth, which absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. It is formed when electric or ultraviolet energy reacts with oxygen molecules typically made of two atoms causing them to temporarily recombine into groups of three. The new molecule is called ozone. Unstable and quick to react with other substances, oxygen's traditional properties are suddenly more powerful. The ozone acts as a sort of super oxygen in a way. It's sort of electrified oxygen. It carries negative ions on it, and it, it's a very potent oxidizing agent, sort of like bleach, you know like Clorox, really. And that's why people are afraid of it. You know, they feel that it's going to bleach out all your vessels. And quite obviously, if you put too much in, it will. By the early 1900s, a handful of European cities had beaten epidemics like typhoid fever by ozonating their drinking water. Today, more than 3,000 cities and towns around the world, including Moscow, Montreal, and Los Angeles, bubble ozone through their water supplies, oxidizing particulates, killing all bacteria and viruses, and leaving the water disinfected and safe to drink. But ozone is also controversial. Greater LA weather forecast, about 75 degrees, what we're peaking at today in the sunshine. The ozone index at about 7.2, that's high, and the UV rating as well, about 7. In high concentrations, ozone irritates the respiratory system. Sunlight reacting with air pollution can produce unhealthy levels of ground-level ozone. Most medical research has concentrated on the negative impact of ozone on breathing. For doctors who know only of these harmful effects, the very idea of ozone as a medical treatment is absurd. Now, this is lunatic uh, medicine, and uh, I really won't pay any attention to it because it's an absolute lunatic. The clinical studies in relation to ozone are absolutely uncontrolled. Some of the procedures they've described are grossly unethical, and you'd never get permission to, to replicate them in a Canadian medical school. Uh, extremely dangerous things to do, and without any evidence of benefit. Number one, there's ignorance. I think that it almost immediately gets dismissed by any serious physician or scientist as soon as they hear the word. Frank Schallenberger has trained hundreds of therapists in North America how to use ozone. As soon as they hear it's ozone, they immediately prejudice because of the alleged toxicity of ozone. But the other thing is, they know ozone is a free radical inducing treatment and it makes zero sense to them. It seems like total bunk to them. And so they don't even look into it. I was shocked to discover that people travel to various, uh, various clinics in Germany from South America, from various parts of the United States, Canada, I mean virtually all over the world and paying uh, between two and three thousand dollars cash on the table American for six treatments. And then the list of clinical indications were just far reaching, I mean they just included almost everything. They have liver disease, peripheral vascular disease, various types of cancer, pain management, migraine, uh, allergies, uh, hepatitis, uh, uh, what else? eczema, osteomyelitis, all sort of diseases of various types, diabetes. And that's immediately, uh, you know, when you see something like that, you immediately get scared off. And it sounds, begins to sound a bit like snake venom oil or something, you know, and, and uh, you start wondering again. But I, I thought, well, so here I'm faced with, with a range of potential clinical applications. A huge number of people are using it. A patient base that's worldwide paying big money for something. It's 
got to be something in this. I paid my own way just to go to Germany because I couldn't believe that these things could really be true, you know. Even though I'd been reading all this literature and stuff, I couldn't believe it. But once you go there and you see in his clinic and you see all these patients who've been coming for five years or ten years or twenty years and told that they were going to have their leg amputated, you know, ten years ago, and here they are perfectly hale and hearty, or people who've had herpes um, zoster or um, uh, hepatitis or something and been treated and said that, you know, they'd had this disease for years and now that they're so much better. Whenever you have a disease, ischemic uh, areas, for instance, in your brain, there's a lack of oxygen, and oxygen is very vital, and you can bring in some uh, metabolism into the brain again, and you can heal, for instance, uh, a brain stroke if you, if you get the patient in the first 48 hours. In this patient here, that was one stroke, a second stroke, and the patient had a third stroke. That small spot here is the third stroke. The first and the second one was treated in the hospital without ozone, and that one was treated at home with ozone. And you can see that the scar is a small one. And since the scars are that small, after brain stroke, the patients are not paralyzed. I can give you uh, the table of, of uh, brain stores in the United States from 71 and from, from 90. There were in 9,750,000 brain strokes, 250,000 persons died, and 16% are so disabled that they need total care around the clock. And, and ozone will help them? I, I can count it up from 40 patients, but in 40 patients, nobody was dying, nobody is disabled, and only two are so disabled that they have basic movement only. This 1997 study shows that the effects of some drugs are made more effective when combined with ozone. We can um, take 50% of the amount of uh, drugs we normally use plus ozone, and then it works in the same way, but we don't have the side effects of drugs. For instance, loss of hair, vomiting, dizziness, and so on. German doctors were the first to use ozone medically during World War I to sterilize battle wounds. But it wasn't until 1959 that Dr. Joachim Hansler developed the first popular ozone machine for medicine. Today, his daughter, Renata Wieban, a PhD biochemist, carries on his legacy. We are the first company in the medical ozone field. We have about 10,000 medical doctors around Germany, and about 70% are working with our equipment. It's not a treatment for patients at, the, at their home. The therapy to give the right concentration, to, give, to administer it in the correct form is not so easy. Dr. Vibon has also written the definitive clinical reference book on the subject, addressing the science behind the treatment and listing specific dosages for more than 22 areas of medicine. Ozone is applied in various ways. The main method is known as autohemotherapy, where small amounts of blood are exposed to ozone oxygen and then re-injected into the body. Other methods include rectal and vaginal insufflation, external bagging for burns, wounds, and ulcers, and more recently, the use of an ozone sauna. A growing number of dentists now use ozone to treat cavities and to flush the mouth with ozonated water during surgery, lowering the risk of infection. The most controversial method has been direct intravenous injection but accidents by untrained therapists have led to several fatalities, and conservative ozone doctors now prohibit the method. The cutting edge is found in only a handful of clinics. This one is in southern India. A dialysis-type method allows continuous treatment of the blood through a canister of hollow fibers, which allows maximum surface contact with the ozone oxygen. This method, more than any other, shows the dramatic change in blood color from dark to bright red. I think I was in the world the first physician who treated uh, AIDS patients with ozone. You cannot kill the virus, but you can help the patients. You know? 
And my first patient, they are living in a good situation. They are doing very, very well. They are working. The best success we have from eczema patients then asthma, polyarthritis, and on special cases of cancer, lymph cancer, non-Hodgkin, Hodgkin, we are successful too. The relationship between oxygen and cancer cells was defined by two-time Nobel Prize winner Dr. Otto Warburg, who confirmed that the key precondition for the development of cancer cells is a lack of oxygen at the cellular level. In 1980, the peer-reviewed journal Science reported that ozone inhibits the growth of human cancer cells without damage to healthy cells. How is it possible that one medical therapy could have reported benefits in so many areas of medicine? Along with hydrogen peroxide, hyperbaric oxygen, and mineral oxide supplements, Ozone belongs in a family called the oxygen therapies. The implications for these therapies are based on the relationship of oxygen to human health, fundamental for the transformation of energy that makes human life possible. It is instrumental in every process, from cell creation and respiration to movement and consciousness. Sufficient amounts provide energy for physical activity, stimulating growth in a healthy immune system. If this swimmer does not surface, within minutes he will die. Oxygen is essential for life, and ozone is energized oxygen. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. Ozone, applied in small, precise amounts, increases oxygen uptake and stimulates the release of oxygen throughout the body. Another thing are burns. It's a very important treatment because in case of a burn, you know it, it's very painful. So after 10 minutes, no pains. You don't get any infection. And after three weeks of treatment for that terrible burn, you have an effect in this way. And after half a year, you can't even see that there is a scar or that there are any alteration of tissue. And the healing time, one third of the normal time without ozone therapy. And that's the reason why I'm using it in that. If ozone is so popular in Europe, why is it not common in North America? The Canadian Department of Health and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration require expensive tests proving safety and effectiveness before a drug or medical device can be used. And these tests have not been done. Even in Germany, ozone has yet to receive approval, partly because doctors haven't needed approval to use it. We have made it very clear legally that the medical doctors are allowed or have the freedom of therapy, what we call it, to treat their patients in whatever way they feel. It must be responsible. Otherwise, the patients may intend to sue him, I mean. How dangerous is ozone therapy? In 1980, this published study from a German university surveyed more than 1,000 therapists who had given more than 5 million ozone treatments. 90% of the therapists reported the treatment effective, with only one finding it unhelpful. This study also reported that ozone therapy had one of the lowest levels of side effects of any medical treatment. The results were reviewed and endorsed by the German Society of Pathologists. Sometimes you have uh, a kind of allergic reaction on ozone, yeah. but I have seen this only three times mm -hmm. under 10,000 cases. The gold standard in medical research is called the double-blind study. To avoid potential bias, neither patient nor doctor knows whether the patient gets a placebo or the real thing. But in Germany, what doctor wants to give a placebo to seriously ill patients? In Germany, we have treated, I think, no less in the last 40 years, no less than 10 million people. I think more. Now you have the biggest test with 10 million people. No, what do you want more? It's not double blinded. Not double blinded, sure. <laughs>
Yeah, not ever blind. Ozone's early development was based on the empirical findings of doctors in day-to-day -day experiences with patients. But the historic lack of controlled studies has caused critics to dismiss early reports as anecdotal and lacking scientific merit. Unfortunately, you see, it has been always in the hands of private uh, physicians, and they didn't care about what uh, statistics or uh, about a proper clinical study. They just carry on. If you report uh, your data your, uh, with your subjective uh, uh, impression uh, and feeling in, a, in an abstract form, uh, really, that, that's, it's, a, it's irrelevant because it is not really, no, no, no data at all. No, the scientific community will never accept this sort of uh, communication. And so Dr. Bocci and others investigated the scientific validity of ozone. We started the, to study the uh, effect of ozone on white cells. And we found that ozone can uh, stimulate uh, cytokine production, that is production of, uh, for instance, interferon, uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha. These agents directly attack the causes of disease, such as bacteria, viruses, and carcinogens. Uh, the fact that uh, ozone therapy could be useful in different diseases has a rational basis, because you see, you treat blood. Blood is made of several entities, of several cells, of, with different functions. And therefore, by activating different cells, you can treat different uh, pathologies. That is quite, uh, is quite reasonable. Ozone use has spread from Germany throughout Europe and beyond. But in Russia, a state-run healthcare system has propelled ozone to the front ranks. Major animal and human studies conducted at government hospitals led to approval by the Ministry of Health many years ago. Ozone has been practiced in Russia for more than 40 years already. The most important event nowadays is the establishment of all Russia Association of Ozone Therapy. In very many parts of Russia and what we now call the Commonwealth of Independent States or the form of the Soviet Union, who bring medical ozone into their clinical practice. Ozone therapy we started more than 20 years ago, and in the present time, we have organized Система обучения, подготовки врачей, специалистов озонотерапевтов. После дипломного образования, образования в, в, в России включает в себя преподавание озонотерапии. I'm using ozone therapy from 1992. My special interest is pelvic inflammatory diseases. As for results of our work, the most important result is the high percent of pregnancy in group with uh, pelvic inflammatory diseases because infertility is the most important complication of such kind of disease. Uh, the percent of pregnancy in group after ozone therapy is two and a half times higher than uh, the control group. The main result is uh, well-being of our patients and in my patient I, patients I have no recurrences of diseases. Other research shows benefits with ear infections, shown here, better results with breast cancer compared to chemotherapy, and reduced nerve damage in burn victims. In this major study of 500 patients with a variety of internal disorders, ozone resulted in improvements for 90% of them. It is now even used experimentally during open heart surgery to reduce the risks of transfusion. Nowadays, when all the drugs we buy have become so expensive, ozone is a very good remedy. And it's less time consuming for the doctors, for the nurses to use it, and it is cheap for the patients. Russian doctors are also members of the International Ozone Association, which holds world congresses every two years, where the cutting edge of ozone research is presented. Hundreds of medical papers have now been published by the IOA, including this study of 300 herpes patients in Brazil, 
which found ozone reduced pain for almost 90% of them, and for 30%, an elimination of outbreaks for more than a year. And in April 2004, scientists from the University of Marburg announced a potentially major breakthrough. Rabbits with solid deadly tumors were then treated with ozone injected into the peritoneal cavity. The tumors were completely eliminated in 50% of the animals. But important human studies still need to be done. In Cuba, Fidel Castro personally mandated the National Ozone Research Center, which then conducted studies that led to approval by the Ministry of Health. Today, more than 100,000 Cubans have been treated for free. The government even runs an ozone clinic for foreigners. It's not a, a paradox that many people want to go to Cuba to be treated. In every main hospital, in every place in Cuba, there is a ozone therapy service. The quality, the attention, the medical knowledge is very high in Cuba. Well, we have introduced ozone therapy in 1986. We have begun using ozone in animals. We have performed a lot of preclinical tests in order to be sure that this therapy doesn't cause any side effects. After that, we have begun with clinical experimentation, with clinical protocols, in order to know what are specifically the therapeutical properties of ozone. And we have begun in the field of angiology. Then we have treated patients with diabetic food with very good results. We increase the healing and also we avoid or diminish amputations in those patients. And then we continued in the field of ophthalmology. And especially in retinitis pigmentosa, we have treated more than 5,000 patients with good results, increasing visual field in almost 70%. In Kiva, we have worked uh, and developed therapeutic procedures in angiology, cardiology, gastroenterology, dermatology. It's ophthalmology, gynecology, internal medicine, intensive cares, orthopedics, hematology, neurology. You see, we will study every, every field of medicines and we have obtained good results. In senile dementia, Alzheimer's disease, stroke, also we have treated Parkinson's disease, always improving quality of life. Of course, I'm not talking about the cure of Parkinson. But that is important. Increase the quality of life is so important that patients, our patients, receive some therapy with open heart. Yet just across the Gulf Stream, ozone therapy is mired in controversy. In the United States, researchers have largely ignored it, and government officials in the media have called it medical fraud. There was a report done by NBC News. Uh, they went to the Dominican Republic and they interviewed a, uh, a man who was giving, uh, giving ozone treatments for cancer. And this person was not a doctor. And they spent a lot of time talking about all the terrible things he did. And there happened to be hundreds and thousands of qualified physicians who are licensed. Uh, one of them even was nominated for a Nobel Prize in Medicine, who they could have interviewed. And they decided not to do that. And I remember confronting NBC News about this, and they didn't even reply. Ozone or oxygen therapy. Many people say that it is an effective treatment for cancer and AIDS. Dr. Harvey Waxman is a malpractice attorney as well as a neurosurgeon. Some combination, huh? A hoax, right, Harvey? Absolutely. Unquestionably a hoax. There's Adam right here. He says his T-cell counts 1,000. Well, uh, it's wonderful. I'm happy for him. I'm absolutely happy for him, and I really am. However, testimonials are no different than snake oil salesmen yeah, who well, had people who threw away or faith healers. And you know... First, though, a tragic story of cancer, ozone, and money. Ozone therapy is controversial. The stories that it works are anecdotal. Rare media coverage on the subject has profiled con men and ignored the science. Ozone has also been used as an example of health fraud by FDA officials. Hello, my name is Ken Thiefault. 
I'm a scientist and clinical researcher. Despite his white coat, this man is no doctor, and in 1999 was sentenced to prison for making false claims and selling ozone equipment. A doctor I know of in Mississippi recently cured 248 cases of AIDS simply with the use of ozone. Those are the classic snake oil salesmen we've heard so much about today. Their actions are moral obscenities of the worst type. And this product, Mr. Chairman, is the notorious ozone generator that you've heard so much about today. This is the tube by which the individual purports to be able to insert, oh, it's even the wrong tube, but you get the idea, to put ozone into their rectum or their vagina, over, despite the fact that there is no medical evidence to support the efficacy of ozone. No published studies have ever shown ozone can cure AIDS, and no peer-reviewed doctor has claimed it. But why has this FDA official denied any medical benefit for ozone whatsoever? Over, despite the fact that there is no medical evidence to support the efficacy of ozone. Yeah, well, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So what's new about that? How many people out there are going to be shocked to find out that their politicians, that their people in high office don't know what they're talking about? In 2004, the FDA website continues to list ozone as having no medical benefit. The resulting bias has profoundly affected the public's perception of ozone and sent a chill through the research community. Despite a sometimes hostile environment, some limited research has been conducted in the United States, notably with HIV. We worked on the AIDS virus to try and see how quickly we could inactivate this um, and at the same time compare it to what effect that had on a healthy white blood cell. And we found that we could produce an enormous inactivation of the virus, reducing it from a million virions down to no viruses at all at, say, four micrograms of ozone. And twice that dose had no adverse effect on the healthy white blood cell. During that time from naught to eight micrograms, that was double the dose that was uh, adversely affecting the virus, you are actually stimulating the white blood cell to be more effective. Other researchers found similar results. The Canadian Department of National Defense investigated ozone's potential to sterilize blood. Very, very profound demonstration of, of the potential as an antiviral agent here. And of course we're dealing not with concentrations that, that um, are toxic to the human, but in fact concentrations of, of ozone that have been used in Germany in clinics for the last 30 years. The next step was an animal study. So in 1993, researchers injected plasma contaminated with the simian version of HIV into healthy monkeys. All monkeys injected with contaminated plasma died within 14 days except those receiving contaminated plasma which had been treated with ozone. They remained 100% uninfected and healthy. Some limited human research followed. Inadvertently, we discovered that this particular type of therapy has a, an incredible effect in terms of managing pain. I mean, it has a very potent analgesic effect. And then secondly, we were able to discover that the blood that's ozonized actually triggers off the production of interleukin-2, one of the immune regulators. And definitely, there is no evidence of toxicity. I keep coming back to the analgesic issue because it's, it's profound. You have to experience it for yourself. And once you've done that, then you become the zealot, you know. I mean, it, I mean that's why there are casualties of, uh, in the war of science, that, uh, that you become so convinced that something is right that, that you're prepared to accept all of the consequences. And some of those consequences can, it can mean the termination of a career. In some cases, you become an outcast to the, to the establishment. So here we were sitting on, on a very simplistic technology that had promise of literally blowing the lid off of North American medicine or North American pharmaceutics anyways. But funding priorities changed and the research ended. Ten years later, Mike Shannon explains why. There was a, uh, a fairly significant underestimation of, of what the costs, the complexity, 
and the timelines uh, were for the development of something like uh, like ozone therapy in a North American within a North American regulatory framework. Sadly, uh, at least to a certain extent, I think the ball was dropped. Um, not by the Canadian government, by the way. Uh, because, as I said earlier, it's not the Canadian government's responsibility to develop these, these types of technologies. The Canadian studies used equipment from two companies. Both struggled for many years to obtain approval to market their equipment. One company, now called Vasogen, uses an expensive, complicated and patented method that combines ozone with heat and ultraviolet light to treat tiny samples of blood. In February 2004, Vasogen received European approval to treat vascular conditions. But nowhere in the company website or brochure is the word ozone ever used. They declined a request for an interview. The other supplier was a tiny American startup called Medizone International, created almost 20 years ago by Terence McGrath in New York. We filed with the Food and Drug Administration for the uh, sale of the drug produced by the equipment uh, and its use in the treatment of AIDS. The FDA required that we carried out uh, research to demonstrate non-toxicity and likely efficacy uh, and that uh, we've done. Medizone conducted lab and animal studies and their application for human trials also referenced the millions of people treated in Europe but that information was dismissed as anecdotal. The FDA wanted more animal studies, but by the early 1990s, Metazone had run out of money. Desperate for research dollars, Metazone then applied to the U.S. government's National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute to test ozone's potential to sterilize blood. They presented the Canadian monkey study, as well as research conducted by a respected co-discoverer of the HIV virus. We were able to sterilize HIV and HTLV very effectively in an in vitro setting uh, in human plasma without destroying human factor eight. Our hope was that we could then pursue this strategy and see could we use ozone as a way to make um, human plasma products safer. Um, would this be a strategy that we could exploit not just for HIV for, but for any potential infectious agent, even those that we haven't discovered yet, and that the ozone might be a cost-effective uh, a thorough way of eliminating infectious agents from plasma products. Government reviewers could find no fault with Metazone science, but their application was still rejected for reasons other than scientific. Although not on the review committee, one NIH official did agree to comment. Ozone, I think, has, uh, has some potential toxicity to tissues. And of course, many things that kill viruses will also kill blood cells. So. Virtually all of it has a degree of subjectivity, although there are some uh, uh, pretty standard rules of research. It's flawed, it, people are flawed, but I don't know that there's a better way than the overall uh, uh, peer review, the way, the way the NIH uh, has conducted it for years. Who is to prove this, this thing if it isn't the NIH? There's enough uh, material from Europe uh, to at least consider the examination of it, to go ahead and look at it. It's been around since the turn of the century. The U.S. National Institutes of Health is the largest medical research group in the world. Their 2004 budget is $27 billion, which supports research in more than 2,000 laboratories. The role of the NIH is to ask and answer and ameliorate the public health problems of a nation. Doctors and AIDS patients presented scientific and clinical evidence to Tony Fauci, director of viral research at the NIH. There have been no data that indicate in an organized, reliable clinical trial that ozone has any positive effect. There are anecdotal reports of people say that I did ozone enemas or injected a ozone intravenously and my CD4 count bounced way up, but when you look at it in an organized way, you, you, there doesn't seem to be any indication that's good. That doesn't mean that any given treatment might not have some potential benefit, but claims of efficacy are not backed up by solid scientific data. I understand until something is approved, it has to go through rigorous medical study.
but they won't even look at this. Now, come on, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. And as people are dropping dead in the years to come of AIDS, eventually someone is going to say, well, hmm, how come these people like Mr. Stephen here, who are using the ozone, aren't getting sick and progressing? What benefit does ozone really offer for people with AIDS? More research is clearly needed. But without the support of a large drug company or the government, who will do the studies? Meanwhile, just down the road from the U.S. Congress at the National Library of Medicine, the database continues to grow. By 2004, PubMed contained 194 references to ozone therapy from major peer-reviewed medical journals around the world. More than 95% of them report improvements and benefits for AIDS, tuberculosis, hepatitis, reduction of infection and pain, and a reduction in mortality. Still, the treatment is largely unknown to American researchers. Some have called it a conspiracy of ignorance. I believe, and what I said today, I need to concentrate on continued basic research and understanding the biological processes involved in virus infection and in pathogenesis, the mechanisms of how the virus produces disease. With our eye on trying to develop what we have to call more natural or biological means of treatment. Because ultimately we would believe or think or propose that these will be less toxic. Um, Dr. Gallo, what about ozone therapy? I don't know anything about it. Oh, sorry. I don't know anything about it. Shunned by the mainstream, ozone has been pushed to the edges of medicine. Grassroots use has been spurred by books like Ed McCabe's, which have reportedly sold a quarter million copies. I will constantly run into doctors saying, well, you know, I've, I've got an ozone machine, but don't tell anybody. Uh, I'm doing ozone infusions, don't tell anybody. Uh, or, well, if you're really sure about the person, tell them they can come see me, that sort of thing. Uh, don't print me in the book, don't put me in the book. It's not illegal, however, you can get into trouble with your licensing boards. The licensing boards are required to make sure that the doctors they have licensed are not subjecting their patients to fraudulent or dangerous therapies. And some of the licensing boards have determined that ozone is fraudulent or dangerous. Naturopathic associations now certify their members to use ozone. And several states and provinces have passed legislation allowing doctors to use unorthodox treatments and a growing number of medical doctors also offer it, sometimes at risk to their license. One maverick doctor who lost his license for five days over ozone was the famous late diet guru Robert Atkins. Well, I had an ozone generator, and we used it on all our AIDS patients. We used it on just about all our cancer patients, and we used it on the yeast patients, which really was the largest group. Uh, we found that our cancer protocol, which included ozone, was effective and was keeping people with so-called terminal cancer alive and without ever having to require pain medicine, uh, without losing weight, without any sign of deterioration, because it has been very useful, extremely safe, a wide spectrum of activity, can destroy tumor, can actually allow for a shrinkage of tumor without destroying the immune system, sort of enhances the immune system while it's doing its benefit against the tumor. Uh, this is true in AIDS. The FDA saw to it that our manufacturer had to take away the business end of the machine. And then when we lost our ozone machine, the patients began to uh, go downhill. To me, there was nothing wrong with ozone. I don't think the FDA ever showed any evidence that ozone was either used improperly or that it even had a risk. It's just that the FDA wanted their jurisdiction. What do you do when you've got nowhere else to go? Uh, you're going to try and find out if there are regulations to restrict you? Well, I think not. You're looking for a, uh, It's not as if we're outbreaking the criminal law. Um, we're looking for a way to get our health back, and I don't think anyone can condemn that. Um, so for me, it was a very important um, decision to get an ozone machine. And uh, I became involved in a car chase uh, where the bad guy 
tried to avoid police and crashed his vehicle into a body of water. As a result of that, um, I entered into the body of water to try and uh, extricate the driver from his vehicle and during the course of that time became exposed to a substance uh, that's believed to be either chemical or viral, bacterial. I became very sick. I was off work for three years. One of the doctor's reports that stated that everything that could have been done for me in the hospital system had been done and that basically it was a case of going home and if I got better then that was a plus and if I didn't get better then well we've tried everything we can for you. Now I'm a just a regular individual. I like to go to ball games, um, drink a beer. Uh, the whole illness process changed my life. And as a result, I had to start looking, uh, researching for myself, uh, ways in which to get back to normal health. So I pursued, among other things, the, uh, the idea of the ozone treatments. And it wasn't something that you could get here in Canada. Within hours of having the first treatment, I started to feel a sense of wellness. And I started to feel my ill health turn around. It was a very slow, a very long, slow process. But the only intervening factor at the time of the change in my health was the ozone treatment. Treatments. I certainly, for one, am very, very grateful. It uh, brought my life back. Um, and for those people that think it's quackery or madcap medicine, um, or wait till you're sick and allopathic medicine, regular medicine has done everything it can for you and you've got nothing left, maybe then you, know, you might want to consider trying ozone. And about six years ago, I became severely ill. I had fever for a year and a severe arthritis. And eventually I was told that um, <clears throat> the only treatment given would be steroids and that also possibly may not help. So really, it was oxygen ozone therapy that uh, saved my life, you could say. When I returned to England from Germany, I resolved to introduce this treatment in England. I've been using this now for five years. It's the main treatment in the center. I do four to 5,000 ozones every year. So it's my major work, really. And I see a variety of um, or people with variety of illnesses, ranging from influenza to cancer and HIV. Despite a growing number of ozone therapists, desperate patients continue to seek treatment outside their own country. Sarah Butson has suffered from hepatitis C for 20 years. She chose a small clinic in Tijuana, Mexico for treatment. I have a background in biochemistry and genetics at a master's level. My initial pre-test or pre-treatment pre viral count was close to 2 million. At the end of treatment, after 30 days, my viral load had gone down to 12,000. I, I had never felt such health. I don't even know if I'd felt that healthy any time previously in my life either. So if you want to look at hepatitis, for example, I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic. Optimistic with a disease that otherwise is still a challenge to modern medicine. And, and um, if you add to uh, the equation the fact that not only do we not, do we not have uh, treatments that are truly efficacious, but we don't have treatments that are affordable either. And we have increasing insights into a disease like that, that the mortality rate and the morbidity is, is enormous. That's, that's why I'm here, you know, is, is the fact that um, even if only 10% of what's being said out there is, is correct, that's enough for me. The healthcare system right now is in serious trouble. I think that a lot of people are dying needlessly because of government policies. And that's one reason why a lot of people are doing self-treatment. That's why they're going to, to Germany and going to Cuba and going to Mexico, because they can't get treatment for their diseases here in the United States. I think it's terrible. 
I think it's terrible. Why do American citizens have to resort to travel to Mexico, to Germany, to the Bahamas, and spend their life savings, their life savings, to try to get a treatment? My T cells were down to like 30. Um, I was having um, fatigue, loss of appetite, intermittent uh, fevers and night sweats, and um, I turned to conventional medicine, AZT, prophylactics for pneumocystis pneumonia, um, CMV. Um, I was prophylacting on about five medications, and I had a very, very quick deterioration. Um, and my body repelled them, I stopped. And since I have began the ozone therapy, I feel phenomenal. Um, I'm as strong as an ox. But what is my alternative? You know, AZT, DDI, DDC, nucleoside analogs that I have been on. <laughs> and I wanted to jump out of a window. I had such severe headaches all the time, and I was emaciating because I couldn't eat. I would want to throw up by just, you know, just smelling food. Uh, and these were all caused by the medications, which the conventional medical establishment is using to uh, supposedly combat this disease. I don't recommend that other people try and administer through themselves. I would, you know, um, emphatically recommend that you do this under the care of a physician, obviously. Um, this is not something that I enjoy doing. Um, I was felt I was near death, and this is something that I have resorted to to save my life. Um, I'm just... Uh, appalled that um, this treatment is unavailable to me. I firmly believe, you know, that this is a, a treatment with much benefit. It certainly also needs to be studied on a scientific level. Dosage is, you know, monitored and, you know, double-blind studies and, you know, I, I definitely support all that, but um, I'm, you know, I was dying then. You know, I need it now, not 10 years down the line. Um, basically, I use a ozone to detoxify liver. Uh, if I'm preparing for a film, uh, I do IV drips, and I'll also do maybe uh, two or three days later uh, an ozone um, injection. Also, I have a herpes condition that usually breaks out from nervous tension. It'll break out in cold sores. I can totally avoid that with ozone insufflation. There's approximately 50 million people in the world with HIV, and there's 300 million with hepatitis C and another 200 million with hepatitis B. We all need to recognize that the world is under a viral affront right now like it has never experienced before, and it's getting worse. And we need inexpensive solutions. And metazone is an inexpensive, very effective, non-toxic solution. Ozone has no side effects. It won't hurt anybody. And one of the major costs of medical treatment in the United States is the fact that people get sick from the stuff we use. In 1994, in the United States alone, over 3,000 people died from ibuprofen-like drugs. They died. Now, I don't know how many were injured and developed ulcers and then ended up in the hospital from the drug, probably an enormous amount of that. But you have to compute that into the cost of medical care, is all the side effects and the what we call iatrogenic diseases induced by the medications. Drugs do help countless people, but there are also the side effects. In 1998, the Journal of the American Medical Association reported serious adverse drug reactions with 2.2 million patients, resulting in 106,000 deaths, making pharmaceuticals themselves the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. You know what it's going to take is the fact that um, conventional medical modalities are bankrupting the country. That's what it's going to take. Because I can go in with ozone and I can treat at a fraction of a cost the same diseases these guys are treating with medications. <laughs> they can't make any money on it. The problem with America is it's an economic-based country. Uh, how would the pharmaceutical companies make money out of ozone? In 2001, in the United States alone, $154 billion were spent on prescription drugs. Profit margins are some of the highest of any industry. The resulting influence on the medical world is profound. 
uh, through grants and through advertising, they basically control every medical institution there is, from the American Heart Association to the Journal of the American Medical Association to any medical journal to virtually any continuing edu education conference you're going to go to. If it's put on by a university in little tiny letters down there, you're going to find out that it was uh, a, a huge grant was given by a pharmaceutical industry. No question about it. In the FDA, drug companies have representatives on nearly all the committees. If there's something which may undersell the average drug company, of course, they're not going to be very pleased if that gets developed. It might be very difficult for them to compete with that. Nobody in the pharmaceutical industry can sell ozone. That's a, that's a main reason. Yeah? When we, find, when we can find a way to sell ozone, I'm sure that uh, ozone is the most important drug in the world. Yeah. It's not a problem of money, it's not a problem of business, it's a problem of the, the health of a human being. Eventually they will have to open their eyes and see the light and um, analyze this as a potential therapy. But until then, Lots of people are going to die, you know?